Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In this series of videos, I wanted to show you tips and tricks around one of the new tools of 3ds Max Design 2014, Populate. With Populate, you can add motion and a sense of scale to your architectural scene really easily. So let's start at the beginning and review how to use Populate. The video you just watched is using flows and idle areas, which are both main tools of Populate. Now for this first tips, let's see how we can create flows and intersections. You will find the Populate tool set under the ribbon. You can maximize the ribbon and click on the Populate tab to have access to the tools. Let's start by creating a flow. Clicking on the Create Flow button will give you access to a brush. The width of the brush will determine the width of your flow. So therefore, how many people are walking side by side in the flow that you're creating. If you change the width of the brush, you will change how many people are walking side by side accordingly. So let's say you're using a hundred units brush, only two people can walk side by side. And if you're using a 300 unit brush, then there's more people that can walk side by side. As you're creating your flow, you'll notice that sometime the path are disappearing. That is because the flow angle that you're trying to reach is not possible. So you'll see that it will highlight the side of the flow with orange areas, letting you know that this angle is not possible. You can at any time change the shape of your path by clicking on the edit button. The first thing you can do is add more points to your path. Now keep in mind that you can also have access to the points under the sub object mode of the command panel. So here I can add more point into my flow and basically move these points around. So I'm basically adding more segment so I can add a smoother curve to my flow if I want to. So you can add as many points as you want and really refine the curvature of your flow. The other thing that you can access is the flow segment. So if you prefer to move the segments rather than the point, that is also possible. So you can access those two under the command panel. Now you can also add a ramp to your flow. Now keep in mind that there is a maximum height to the ramp. So when you reach the maximum height, the flow path will disappear if that height is not accessible. Also, the part that has the ramp will have little arrows to indicate that this is going up or down in that part. So once you're satisfied with the flow, you can click the simulate button and it will populate it with all the characters. So you see at the bottom of the screen here, it's telling you that you're creating 32 pedestrians. And because I had 300 frame by default in my scene, the character were animated over the course of 300 frame. And the character motion is based on high quality motion capture data. So they're walking really naturally along this path. Now there are a few more things you can customize about this flow. First of all, notice that there's little icons, blue icons that represent the male on this flow and pink icon that represent the female on this flow. Now you can change the density of people, the amount of people that is walking on that flow. So if I increase the density of this flow, you'll see that I will have more pink and blue icons on the paths, or if I decrease, then I'll have less. Now, as I am customizing and changing the property of this flow, I will have to re-simulate in order to refresh these changes. And you now see that the density of people has increased to reflect these changes. For now, we'll delete the character as we are playing with the properties of the path. First, you can change the ratio of female to male on that path, and that will be represented by the number of blue or pink icons. I can also change the direction from which these people are walking. So by changing the direction, it will change the orientation of the pink and blue icons. Other changes I can have, I can change the width 
of my path, which will adjust the amount of people that are walking, and also the distance in between the people. Obviously, there's a minimum and a maximum distance for this particular path for the people not to bump into each other and walk comfortably on that path. So every time that you are changing and customizing these changes, you might have to re-simulate to adapt these change and refresh the path. Now, to create cross-section, like paths that interfere with each other, very easy. So I'm going to take a section of the path where I'll be able to include a cross-section and create a path on top of it. Now, when I'm crossing these two paths, you see that I have a green um, cross-section sign that highlights that show me that this part can cross and it's permitted. To help focusing on the cross-section, I'm going to select the first path, go under sub object mode from the command panel, maximize the flow and access the flow segment and delete some of the segment I don't need anymore. Now I want you to notice the behavior of these characters in the cross section. You'll see that some of the people continue on their path, but some of the character are actually changing their course and are changing to reach the other path. Now, it's a little bit hard to see here because I only have 300 frame, which was the default number of frame for my particular animation. So I'm going to increase the number of frame by clicking on the time configuration and changing the end time to 500 frame. I need also to change the number of frame from which the simulation needs to be done to 500 frame and re-simulate to refresh my flows. So you'll notice that some of the people are changing direction during that cross section. So there's a man who change in the middle. There's also a female who's changing. Look at this female here. She's changing direction and starting to walk on the other path. So these cross session are very naturally and some activity is happening randomly in that cross section. Mainly people are avoiding each other and behaving appropriately. Now, if I reduce the cross section, by changing the point here, and I make that a T section rather than a cross section, you'll notice that there's different behavior in a T section. So I'm going to re-simulate this. So first of all, the main change for a T section is that nobody coming from the right will continue on. They will all divert to the other path. So notice that the character that are arriving from the right side or diverting to the other path and changing direction. So that's the natural behavior of a T-shape intersection. Now keep in mind that the two paths don't need to have the same width. One of the paths could be a lot narrower than the other one and the reaction and behavior will still be the same. So these are all your option and different behavior for walking people, so flow of characters. So looking back at the flows within a scene, you can see that here I have used multiple example of flow. So I'm using cross section, T-shape intersection, and just regular flow of people. I'm also using different width that are uh, meeting each other, and that's creating a nice and natural uh, flow and animation in my scene. And you see here the final rendered result of this animation.